Hey, this is Insetic and Blank Tester for Gen X20 level 7, and we just noticed that Luke Lamouche is 7 feet tall. Yeah, he's a 19 year old, 7 foot tall, 180 pounds. I mean, those hands have to weigh at least 20 pounds each. So, I, I, don't, I don't know what to make of that. I really thought the Russian guy would be the tallest, because that's how it seems to end up. He's certainly like the burliest, but I don't remember his height. But seven feet tall? Come on, I'm 6'2", Alan's 6'7". That'd be ludicrous. <laughs> All right, party people! We're going down. About ten and a half thousand leagues, that is, under the sea. Welcome to Aquatica, the submersible suburb of Sunken City. Nice dome! Hey, anyone for an underwater cage match? We're about to pass Poseidon. Is that a dinner fork or a salad fork? Oh, what the fork? fork. fork. On the surface, this place might seem like a walk through the underwater park. But one wrong move, and you're a loser in the lost city of Aquatica! Lazy? I was lazy once. So I'd consider this level kind of the worst level, because you really, well at least on expert mode, you really kind of need to go out of your way to do one or two things to make sure you're going to win, and also this first turn is a real example of the AI never really doing the same thing twice, so you can be screwed in infinite ways trying to round that turn unless you get ahead of them. And then of course you really need to branch off the main route to get enough points, like that jump I did you pretty much need to do that to get uh, an amount of points to win this track unless you really go all out everywhere else. Because if you kept following the route, it'd just kind of drop you off pretty much straight into a rock. And if you didn't take that shortcut, you wouldn't really get any ramps to get points. Like, and in the back half of this course, like once you go underwater, there's really nowhere to get points. I mean, just watch how many points I get before I enter Poseidon, as compared to after. I pretty much only get like 10,000 points afterwards. So you said enter Poseidon, and I saw that looked like his mouth was open. You go inside Poseidon. Again, he's like a statue. A statue of Poseidon. So, so how much money do you think it would cost to build one of those? One million aquata bucks. Wow, a bucks. Atlanta bucks. Why can't it just be Atlantean dollars? Wow, th this part reminds me, uh, in a, uh, in a weird way of uh, of Bioshock. But I guess I was just playing through Bioshock again, so that's probably why. Well, it is an underwater city that somehow seems to be designed extremely well for a, a jet ski race and also somehow has currents that are going to the side. Just, I mean, I mean, sure, sure, you know, don't think about it too hard, but currents in an underwater city, that's... I always found that a little weird. Now, there are a lot of areas where the current doesn't knock you around, but then there's just, like, thin, really thin pathways that can really, you know... You hit the door and you basically need to restart because, I mean, not restart, like reset. Because it's not like it's going to push you into the opening. You're going to get stuck against the door and pretty much need to, like, try to turn around. And also, you just don't have as much space in this track as in the others. Like, the door will close. It'll give you enough room to get through, but you got to be kind of precise. And sure, it's a more technical track than the ones before it because it's the second to last one. But... I feel like there's too little room um, for you to move around in. Yeah, it's... This one seems kind of... I don't know. I, I don't know how to describe how I feel about this. It doesn't seem as fun as the other ones, so. though. Like, it seems like a lot more uh, uh, avoiding obstacles as opposed to managing your speed and current and tricks and stuff like that. It's it's more of a demonstration of how well you can control everything by this point, rather than a demonstration of 
how well you can do tricks or you use your boost strategically seems almost like this isn't going to be a very good analogy but seems almost like one of those jet ski simulator games if there were one you know like a flight sim game as compared to i don't know ace combat Sure. Uh, <laughs> is that even a series anymore? Ace Combat? Yeah. yeah. They, uh... Well, I don't know when the last one came out, but... You know, after seeing that he's seven feet tall... You know... Looking at him dancing around like that, I think I would be terrified. I'm not a terribly tall person, so seeing seeing him dance around like that in real life would be... I think absolutely horrifying for me. I'd be scared shitless. Again, maybe maybe his hair factors into that. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Maybe without his hair, he'd only be like six three. What? Like nine inches of hair? I don't know. Like, okay, well, maybe not that many. How tall do you think his hair spikes are? I don't know. I mean, compared to his face, his hair spikes are like what half half the height of his face, right? I mean, does that seem appropriate? And and so so how tall would they be? I don't I, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Like, what's the proportion? Okay, like, just maybe like four or five inches. Yeah. So maybe. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe he's still goddamn huge. That's the point. Yeah, huge and really really skinny. Because if you're seven foot tall, you're gonna at a minimum be like two hundred. Yeah. Just because you're seven feet tall. But anyway. Next time on Jet X2O, we go to the final race, Metronox, another urban environment as the final environment. Salt Just City. like Salt City, baby. Yeah, We're Metronox bring it. USA. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll see Ajax. I hope so. Unlikely. Goodbye. Till then.